Okay, so today we're going to work uh, more just like upper body frames um, and trying to use that to stop the person from being able to consolidate a pass. Now, I wouldn't look for this, I usually won't look for this straight off the bat. Uh, it's more like when I start getting in danger. Over under pass. Okay, so Dan's like pressuring forward with his head like this. He's gotten past my legs, so I can no longer bring my legs into play. This is where I'd start trying to do uh, what I'm about to show. One hand is going to frame off the shoulder here like this, and my elbow is going to basically try to keep a little bit of elevation. So uh, when I flare my elbow a little bit, when Dan tries to pressure forward, he'll put like a little bit of a choke on himself here like this, okay? Um, it's not going to ever choke him out, but it's enough to just give, give me a little bit of time and a little bit of room to move, okay? Because if you can close the gap fully, I suddenly can't move my, my hips anymore. So just staying on my side, facing Dan, I'm going to use my left hand just to elevate uh, his head a little bit. And my right hand, for this one, I'm actually going to go palm up. I'll often teach it uh, palm forward, but this time we're going to go like uh, palm up like this, okay? And I'm going to push around the elbow. Now, you have to have a little bit of, like, faith in just holding this grip. If Dan goes to pass me now, like it's really hard for him to consolidate if he can't connect to me with his upper body like that. Yeah, so even if we're here, as he tries to pass, I can always bring my, my legs back in, okay? Um, and we're gonna work just from here first, trying to turn into them, and then often they'll try and counter as well by then reaching this arm over the top as a way of Trying to beat that, okay, and I'll show you how we deal with that as well. But first, let's just work using this frame and using this arm. And Dan's going to basically try to just uh, like his aim is to go chest to chest like this, okay? And I want the person on the bottom just practice as Dan's trying to do that, bringing your legs in, staying on your side, like so, okay? So just so always hipping out, trying to get your legs back in. Right. Does that make sense? So let's just warm up with that. Two minutes one person, two minutes the other. Three, two, one. What I, what I was, like, I'm talking about like if you're passing, you can kind of pass low or, or high and they're, and they're quite different. So, like if I'm low like this, I'm usually trying to like, you know, if, I, if everything goes well, I want to like cross face and hold the hip. Yeah, if I get this, it's really hard for, for Dan to recover because he can't hip escape well. But if he's elevating me here, I can't really control the hip properly unless I can get my uh, forearm or my elbow past to block it. But he can use that to stop that. And he can use his hand to stop me from getting any sort of cross face here. Yeah, so my chance of passing this way is really slim with those, uh, with these grips he's using, okay? Now, so what I'll, what someone will often do, if they're trying to pass low like this and you're blocking what I can try to do to beat these frames is to try to like switch my hand over and come over the far side with my, my hand. If, I, if I'm successful with this, I can now start to flatten it out and hold him in side control. So I've just made a big upgrade in, in my position. All right. So all we're going to do with that, right, so get low, try and cross this. Thing. trying to cross face me here like this and then as he goes to switch when he realizes that's not going to work I'm going to sit up as basically like a kind of like a Turkish get up like this okay I'm trying to push up and potentially across if I can push across that's even better okay now because I'm blocking the back of the elbow with that grip when he tries to turn back to face me he can't okay so I've got plenty of room scoot my hips back recover my gaps even if you don't get all the way to the other side, so if I'm here and I just get like up, it's usually enough to get up on your hand, scoot back, and get your legs back into position. Okay. So once more, we're here. The person's going to get frustrated not being able to consolidate. They're going to swing their arm over the top. I want you to get up. It's a real timing thing. And then we're going to scoot their hips back and recover our gaps in there. Okay. You have to time it right. If you wait till they're they're here and then you try and go, you're gonna be stuck. Okay? So as they're going, we start to get out, scoot back, we're back to our gap. Okay. Let's do 
two minutes of that as well. So first one pressuring again, and then at some point you're gonna try and swing your arm over to the other side to control them, and you're gonna get up and escape. Three, two, one. Just one thing on that. Um, just make sure your arms like straight. As soon as you bend your arm, it becomes who's stronger. Yeah, because I'm like when my arm's straight, it's my skeletal strength. It's not going to be stronger than my the bones in my arm, so he's not going to be able to bend and close the gap. But as soon as I bend, now it's like, can I bench press harder than he can bicep curl? But then probably not. Unlikely, he <laughs> says. Uh, so keep it straight the whole time. So even as he starts to, you know, he gets around the guard and he starts to switch over, my hand staying straight it gives me a lot more room and it's a much stronger structure. Okay. I'm just going to quickly go over one other way we, use, we do this before we start some, some rolling. Often if someone goes underneath the leg, okay, so a lot of people will pass around, they'll reach under your leg and start to come around your guard this way. And we can use this exact same principle because they're going to turn their elbow as they start to come around, okay. So what we're going to aim to do, uh, so if you've never done this pass before, it's pretty like the simple way of saying it, just reach under the leg and sort of like throw the leg past your body, if that makes sense. Uh, so as he goes to do that, I'm going to catch the back of the elbow. I'm going to turn and I'm going to start to sit up. But I want to get, again, I want to try and get my elbow straight as quick as I can. Because well, I know once it's straight, that you can't turn back into me. Yeah? If I'm back like this, yeah, you can probably actually squash me back down. Okay? So Dan's going to start to come under. I'm going to reach behind the elbow, get up, straighten my arm. <laughs> Just put them all lying on your back here. They come under the leg. I want you to get up, straighten your arm. Back or recover. For this one, you won't be able to start with it straight. You have to kind of, when they're under the leg, you will have to be bent, but you want to try to get as quick as you can to a straight position. Out, scoot away, recover your gap. Okay, let's do two minutes of that each, then we'll start some rolling. Okay, three, two, one.